Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this Peer Exchange video editorial series. This video series features expert panel discussions on recent advances and pharmacoeconomic considerations in the clinical management of castration resistant prostate cancer in today's environment of managed care and health care reform. I'm Dr. Raul Concepcion, and I'm a practicing urologist specializing in urologic oncology, and I'm also the director of clinical research at Urology Associates in Nashville, Tennessee. I also happen to be the immediate past president of the large urology group practice association. For today's panel, I am joined by leading experts with a wide range of experience in these areas. My name is uh, Dr. E. David Crawford. I'm a professor of surgery, urology, and radiation oncology at the University of Colorado in Denver. My primary interest is prostate cancer. Hi, uh, I am Jeff Dunn. Uh, I'm a pharmacist, and I am the senior vice president at VRX Pharmacy Services, a pharmacy services management company in Salt Lake City, Utah. We provide services to health plans and employer groups. And prior to that, I spent 12 years as the formulary and contract manager at Select Health, which is the managed care arm of Intermountain Healthcare. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Kaloje. I'm National Medical Director, Oncology Solutions for Aetna. Prior to joining Aetna, I was a community oncologist in practice in Albany, New York, and I was part of the U.S. Oncology Physicians Network, where I was chairman of the PT Committee and a National Medical Director. Hi, I'm David Quinn. I'm a genitourinary medical oncologist at the University of Southern California. Keck School of Medicine. Uh, in addition, I'm the medical director for the USC Norris Cancer Hospital and Clinics. Prior to coming to USC, I worked in Sydney, Australia. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. And again, we appreciate you being here and being part of this panel discussion, which I think will be very valuable. So the first area of discussion is, re is really to discuss the recent advances and paradigm shifts in the treatment of castration-resistant prostate cancer. There are a number of key topics that we will discuss during this panel discussion. This will include pathway, formulary, and sequencing of agents, payment reform and reimbursement challenges, benefit design, cost and contracting, tools for the providers, personalized medicine, channel management and site of care, and overall general education. What I'd like to do is really give you an overview of the disease burden of prostate cancer as well as the challenges that we face, especially in the advanced prostate cancer world. Prostate cancer has is, is really become uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite an issue here in the United States. It is the most common solid tumor in men over the age of 50. It is the second leading cause of cancer-specific death behind lung cancer with close to 30,000 deaths annually. Currently, there are approximately 2 million men that are diagnosed with prostate cancer. And it is estimated that close to 50% 50, 50 of those men may actually be candidates for systemic therapy. Over $105 billion is spent annually in the United States on cancer care. Of that $105 billion, 9.8 billion is spent specifically for the management of our prostate cancer patients. When you break that number down, approximately 3.92 billion or 40 percent is spent on initial care, 5 billion dollars or 51 percent is spent on continuing care, and approximately 10 percent is spent in the last year of life. For those suffering with metastatic disease, 50% of the total lifetime costs of treating prostate cancer may occur in the last year of life. We anticipate the cost of, of managing advanced prostate cancer is going to rise in the United States. This really relates to the fact that the population is aging and many of our approved therapies actually have a survival benefit. So with that as a backdrop, what I'd like to do is is go through a brief overview and look at the currently FDA approved agents in the management of advanced prostate cancer. So Dr. Quinn, as a medical oncologist, uh, we know that over the past three years, 
Seven new agents have been approved. But before that, give us a, a glimpse of what the landscape looked like, if you will, for the, man for the management of the advanced prostate cancer patient. So if we go back a decade or more uh, to before 2004, the only agent that was approved for castration-resistant prostate cancer was mitoxantrone. And this was a, an old-style chemotherapy uh, given intravenously every three weeks, which improved palliation for the patient. So it delayed pain by six months, but had absolutely no effect on overall survival. In 2004, we had the reporting of two studies, the Southwest Oncology Group 9916 study and another study called uh, TAX327, in which docetaxel and mitoxantrone were compared. And in both those studies, docetaxel was superior and so therefore became our standard of care for patients with castration-resistant disease. If we move forward from that point, we then had docetaxel as our first treatment and mitoxantrone as our, our second uh, treatment, mitoxantrone being relegated to second line. Subsequently, the TROPIC study was undertaken with a new taxane called cabazitaxel or Jeftana, uh, and this uh, drug was designed in cell lines that were resistant to docetaxel and designed to work after docetaxel. So in that study, we took patients who were uh, uh, refractory or resistant to docetaxel and we gave them either cabazitaxel or mitoxantrone. And there was a significant survival advantage for cabazitaxel. And so our current use of chemotherapy uh, really now begins with docetaxel. We then transit to uh, cabazitaxel, Jeftana, and we reserve mitoxantrone for, for after that. So we, we have a sort of sequencing that we go through with these drugs. And so that, that is the current paradigm shift, is that traditionally there has been mostly cytotoxic chemotherapy for the management of advanced prostate cancer patients. But now what we're seeing is newer therapies with less side effect profiles, better tolerated by patients, and actually improved survival benefit. And this paradigm shift that we keep discussing really moves cytotoxic chemotherapy further down the line and some of these newer agents uh, being used in a more proximal state. So. Uh,